Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel and to, in today's video we're going to discuss differences between the 301 head cylinder head and like your what I call the conventional Pontiac cylinder head, your 326 through 455, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. And I get asked all the time, you know, why don't you put a set of 670 heads or 6X heads onto a 301 block? All you know, and I'm here to, to kind of debunk the myths about it or actually give you the facts about it and show you the differences and why it's not really a direct swap. All right, to start off, we have two cylinder heads here. Uh, over on my left, we have a conventional 301 uh, cylinder head. And then over here, we have a number 17 head, which is a uh, Pontiac 350, I believe around 1968, 69. Um, I think it's a 68 350. So one of the things is there's a couple different areas. And, and like I said, I get asked all the time, well, why can't you just put conventional heads uh, onto the 301, you know, let it breathe? Uh, that'd be great if it was a direct swap. Now, the only things that are similar, uh, the head bolt pattern is the same. So yes, physically they will go onto the 301 block. Physically they will take the head bolts and bolt on. But there's a lot of other differences. Uh, still looking into the similarities, D port exhaust ports are very similar. Uh, almost, turn it around. Almost the same, but we don't have this third bolt hole in the center exhaust port like we do. The 301 uses this third hole, whereas conventional does not. But it is the same bolt pattern um, as between the two. So the exhaust manifold bolt pattern is the same. Head bolt pattern is the same. Looking at the intake manifold ports, the bolt pattern, again, is the same, but obviously drastic difference in the intake ports between the two. And we've, we've discussed the 301 stuff with the large port versus the small. Over here, this is what I call the conventional intake port, where we have an individual port per cylinder versus Siamese or shared intake port uh, on the 301. So let's look at the gasket surface and the combustion chamber a little bit. Now my number 17s here, they do look a little bit deeper. I think they are 72 cc heads. Supposedly 301 is supposed to be uh, the same also. So one of the biggest things that we're looking at is the coolant passages. If you look at the 301, we have what I call these windows for the coolant to go around. This one's a little dirty. Uh, to go around the combustion chamber. Okay. Whereas on our 350 head, we have holes. They're just round holes. Okay. Um, that's that's going to be important later. The other thing is, is what I call the scallop. This is a big one. If you look at the 301 head, on the exhaust side of the head, you can see that the gasket surface goes right to the edge and it's straight. Okay, you got this little notch here, but gasket surface all the way to the edge of the casting. If you look at the 350 head, I call this the scallop. It does not go all the way to the edge. Well, what's the big deal about that? That's where we have to look into the... the um, the block itself where the gasket surface sits on the block. Let's take a look at a block that I've got over here. So here we have a 301 block. We have the cylinder head off of it. Again, we have our coolant windows going around the cylinders. And if you look, it's straight along the exhaust side uh, of the gasket surface. Now, when you look at like a conventional 326 through 455, it is not a straight edge down here on the block. The block is actually scalloped just like the cylinder head was because these coolant passages are not windows, they're holes. Now, in order to kind of show that a little bit, what I did here was I took a 400 head gasket and it was a used gasket, so I saw the impression of the scallop and I actually cut the gasket following the scallop marks. 
just to show you that when you lay this gasket on the 301 block and everything does line up you can see that those scallops actually interfere and expose our coolant windows so when you bolt the head on where you see gasket on this on, on this gasket itself wherever you see gasket material that's where your compression is uh, of torquing down the head bolts that's what's actually making contact on the cylinder head so there's no contact over here which means that this could potentially leak coolant if you don't have if there's not a lot of clamping force there and there's nothing on the cylinder head to actually clamp and push down on the block so that's one issue now don't get me wrong people have done it people have put conventional cylinder heads on 301 engines made a custom intake manifold for it and were successful with it so i'm not saying that it can't be done it can uh, i'm just showing you the differences and what some of the challenges are that you have to kind of overcome so back to the block I've seen some people braze the block and try to fill in those holes. I've seen some people that actually just used the regular 400 head gasket and really didn't have an issue. I'm just saying there's the potential for an external leak because some have done that and had the leak. Uh, now there's one other area that is also kind of tricky and it's this. I call it the teardrop. So in the 400 style head gasket, the oil return is a giant teardrop shape. And you're thinking, well, no big deal. Everything's exposed the way it should. But if I take this thing off the dowel pin, and if you stare right there at that corner, take it off the dowel pin and move it, and oh, look, we expose the coolant window. So looking at it, I, I'm sorry, it's on this side. If you, It's barely covering barely covers that I mean it's close it's real close now I have heard that Butler performance you know the, the Pontiac guys their head gasket this teardrop is a little bit smaller and gives you a little more gasket surface there but that's awfully close but what's but why is that a teardrop I don't know because here is a 301 head gasket and you can see it's a hole it's not a teardrop so that you know I don't know why they made that change. It could be the way the, the deck of the block is. Maybe the uh, the 400, this is chamfer different. I'd have to look. I don't have one readily available out in front of me to, to compare it to. It's kind of tucked away. I have a 350 that um, is kind of is not readily accessible. Uh, some other things that you'll notice. I mean, yeah, some of the coolant passages do line up. They're a little weird and off. Um, it looks like there's coolant passages here that are not in the block on the 400 head gasket that are not that would be completely blocked off or not used um, technically if this was a complete 400 gasket there would not be any coolant passages here for the block this would all these all these on the bottom would be blocked off uh, with no coolant flow through them so what do you do about this <laughs> can you do anything about it um well, looking back at the cylinder head, maybe it's possible to fill this in. Maybe you could JB weld it. I don't know. I've never tried it. Maybe it's something I will try. I don't know. <laughs> um, obviously, and then you got to do something about the coolant passages and the differences. Now, there's one other thing. Uh, there's one other thing that kind of makes a little more sense or maybe helps out a little bit more. And that is aftermarket aluminum heads. Ooh. <laughs> so the aftermarket aluminum head, this happens to be a KRE D-Port, Kaufman Racing D-Port aluminum head. And if you look, oh, we have gasket surface all the way to the edge, just like the 301. <laughs> um, it's possible that this might be a better situation. But again, we have coolant passages that are around holes, not windows. So I came up with a cylinder head gasket for that. Now this is a total prototype gasket. It was very expensive to make, but this is an MLS gasket that I designed in CAD to actually allow an, uh, an aftermarket aluminum head because not only does the Kaufman racing head uh, have the gasket surface all the way to the, to the very edge, 
but so does the Edelbrock cylinder heads. Uh, the Edelbrock D ports do it. Um, I don't know about any of the other ones if they do or not, but this, this head gasket is designed for the uh, aftermarket aluminum head, but is designed to be used on the 301 block. So again, uh, <laughs> I know people are gonna ask, is this head gasket available? Do you make an MLS head gasket for the 301? No, I don't. Um, I have my reasons against MLS head gaskets, especially in, well, in, in boosted applications. Not that it's a bad thing. Um, and I may have stated this before, but might as well go into it here. So an MLS head gasket, multi-layered steel. A lot of people like to use it because, you know, there's no chance or very, very small chance of it blowing out, you know, and, and uh, actually being compromised. That's a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing because a conventional head gasket could also be a really good fuse. And I state that meaning if something were to go wrong, you got into some heavy detonation, things went lean, something went bad, something whatever. The first, the weak link would be possibly the, the, the standard head gasket. Pop a head gasket, no other damage is done. Obviously, you know something's wrong and it could most likely be repaired. MLS gaskets, they're not as forgiving. <laughs> uh, it's nice because they, they, they stay sealed, but that could also, if you get into trouble with something, you might end up cracking a piston, torching a piston, torching the block, torching the head, you know, causing damage elsewhere. And, but man, gaskets still hold it. <laughs> um, those are the options. Now, I know, like I said, people like to say, oh, use a 670 head. 670 head is a really good head. That's a 67, 400 head. Um, they have a tight combustion chamber, which is good because let's get into that for a second. Let's talk combustion chamber. Let's talk compression ratio. Compression ratio has a lot to do, obviously, with the bore, the type of piston, but also the stroke of the crankshaft. Well, we're dealing with the Pontiac 301, which has a very short stroke. Because we have su such a short stroke on the crankshaft, we can't build a lot of compression. So the stock heads were roughly 72 cc combustion chambers, and it gave you with a standard non-turbo piston, which was a flat top piston with no valve reliefs, that gave you eight, 8.2 to one compression, uh, compression ratio. The dished pistons in the turbo engine ended up at like around seven and a half to one compression. And that's with the 72 cc chamber. So your 670 heads, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head what that combustion chamber is, but it's probably tight enough to actually keep good compression in it, a good compression ratio. But there's people out there that love the 6X head. And I get why. The 6X head is a great flowing head, but there's two different versions of the 6X head. There's a 6X X-4 and there's a 6X-8. Now these are late 70s 400 heads, actually the 6X-4 was technically a 350 head, but was also used on the W72 option 400. The 6X-4 has a, I believe a 93cc combustion chamber and the 6X-8 is like 101 or something like that. You try to put that on a 301 with a three inch stroke and you basically have like the lowest compression in the world. Basically it's not gonna be a good fit. The other thing is your 670 head, your 6X head, whatever the case may be, most of those usually have a 2.11 inch intake valve. That's a big intake valve. And we have a four inch bore. So it's possible that you could uh, you end up shrouding your intake valve with the small bore. You could notch the cylinder walls for it. Pontiac did it on the 350 because 350 HOs had a 211 intake valve. Now my number 17 heads over there that's just a 196 intake valve. So it's smaller than two inch, bigger than the 172 that's in the 301 head, but maybe that's a better ordeal because you're not shrouding with a small bore. Um, but that's kind of everything that goes into it. It's not as easy as let's just bolt on a set of 6X heads, we'll put make a custom intake for it. You really gotta think it out if you're gonna do it. You gotta kind of figure out what you're gonna do as far as are you going with a stock cast iron head and dealing with the scallops? Are you gonna go with an, you know, an Edelbrock or 
you know, KRE aluminum head. Not have to deal with the scallops, but still have to do some kind of custom uh, head gasket. When it comes to the head gasket, I'm crossing my fingers that I might actually make my MLS style gasket, but turn it into a conventional head gasket rather than MLS. But we'll figure that out in the future. Hopefully we come up with something. But I think we're going to wrap up the video there. Thanks, guys, and we'll catch you next time.